Hey guys, today let's get started with open source. Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we're looking at some code I wrote this week and I want to share that code and improve it with open source. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. Hello, happy holidays and Merry Christmas. And if you're watching this in the future, like in the summer, we'll just save that greeting up for the next holiday. Today, I want to share some code I wrote this week. I needed it at work and it's a Node.js script to just take CSV data, that is comma separated values, and then get a SQL insert statement. So help me import that into a SQL database, SQL if you will. So what I want to do is share this code and improve it through open source because I think it could be useful to others. And I quickly wrote it. I think it could be better and I think it could do more. So let's take a look not only at what the code does, but also at my GitHub repo and how you can contribute to this project. We're in VS Code. Let's take a look at the readme file first. Now this says CSV to SQL insert. That's what I've named this. And it provides table data as a CSV or actually the user, we provide the table data as a CSV. And I've got a link to what comma separated values are if you're not familiar with those. But we take that file and then we output a SQL insert statement or a table with the same name as the file. So as you can see over here, we've got a CSV file directory in our file tree. And inside of there, we've got example table.csv. Now that's what we need to provide. And after we run this script for this uh, code, then the example table.sql is created. So here I'm going to delete this. I guess you could look and see what this has inside of it. Here is the insert SQL statement for a table named example table. So whatever the table is named, that's what you want to name the CSV file. And then of course it creates the SQL file name the same thing. And I'm going to delete this file entirely now and show you how this program works. So I'll open up a terminal window. Looks like I need to just clear that out after sending something to GitHub. And now I'm going to type node and I could type index.js or just dot since our file is index and we're in that root directory. And from there, I need to type the name of the file. So example, Table. I don't need to add the .csv or anything else. So I'm going to press enter now. It says finished and you can see it created the example table.sql file once again. So that's how it works. This is the output I needed to take table data that was in a CSV file and then import it into a MySQL database. So if we look at the index.js, this is where all of the Node.js code is, I've got two functions here. I'm not going to go over them line by line. This is something you could do in my GitHub repo after you fork and then clone it to your computer. And we'll go through those steps quickly in just a moment. But what we've got here is FS is required. I'm importing that from Node. It's not an extra dependency or an outside package. I don't have any of those. And one thing you could contribute if you don't like the use of common JS and require you could switch this over to ES6 imports. That would be an issue you could file in the GitHub repo and then make that change if you don't like the use of common JS. So after that, we've got two functions here. One is write SQL and it is used by the other function, read CSV. So those are the two functions. And that's pretty much all it does, but I'm only using this from the command line. I didn't set this up as something that could be imported into another program. So that's something else we could do to expand this script. So now let's take a look at the GitHub repo. And now we're on GitHub. Let's take a look at the repo details here. And we can see all the files, of course, first. And then if we scroll down, we get the readme in the nice markdown format here. So it has the same data. It's telling you how to use this. But there's a couple of things to highlight here. I've got a contributing file, a code of conduct file, also has an MIT license in the package JSON. So if we look at the package JSON, you can see it's specified license MIT there. So when we go back, go back to the main page we were on, you can see GitHub has identified those, provided a code of conduct tab here and an MIT license as well. But when you want to contribute, it's important, my scrolling isn't working like I want it to today, but click contributing 
and read the contributing file, here's the general steps. So if you haven't contributed to open source before, but you want to contribute to this or another open source project, follow these general steps. So identify an issue or feature to add, and then you want to create an issue at some point. So I guess I should have added this in here as well, because not just do identify it, I should come back and push a change here because not only do you want to identify, you want to see if the issue has been identified by somebody else up here in the issue tab, or if not, create that issue yourself. And then I could apply a label like feature, or it could be a bug or whatever has been identified. From there, you want to fork this repository. You don't want to clone this directly and then try to push back to the main branch or anything like that. You want to fork this. So once again, let me go back to the main page here before we come back. And now there should be a fork button up here, right beside the star button to the left. And you can see when I hover over this, it says cannot fork because you own this repository. But if this was somebody else's open source code, I could fork it and that puts it into my GitHub. From there, I can clone it from my GitHub down to my computer where I would make my uh, patch or add the feature, whatever I wanted to do in VS Code. And when I do that, I'll go back to our contributing steps here. After I have cloned that, which was step three, when I get that code on my computer, after I have cloned it, I want to create a new branch. So not the main branch again, but a new branch. Git checkout dash B will create that new branch and it will switch you over to that branch. So you see the new branch name here. You would name that new branch whatever you want to, and then you would be working on that branch then you probably need to link that back to your GitHub because your, your main branch might have that connection back to the origin, but you'll probably have to do that. And GitHub will give you a message if you try to push to your GitHub and you don't have it linked. So it will tell you how to do that. And then after you complete your work and you do get it pushed back to your GitHub, then you wanna come back to this repository and this is where you would create a pull request. And that's step six here. So here's a pull request tab at the top. And then you could go ahead and create a new pull request. And you could also say what issue that pull request applies to. So if we come back here, besides these general steps, I've got some more directions here as well. Now I know when you first get started with open source, a lot of steps here, and you might be worried about doing the wrong thing. Don't worry about that. I will certainly help if you try to contribute to this one. Uh, open source community is very friendly. Much of the software we use is open source. Just a quick video today to get you started and maybe you could contribute to my project. It's the season, it's the Christmas season and I've got a lot going on. So I just wanted to make a quick video and open up something, the season of giving here. Let me help you get started with open source and you can contribute to my project. So from my family to yours, wishing you a Merry Christmas and happy holidays, and I'll see you in the next one. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.